How many have you forgiven today? Chapter 26, Part 2 Blossom sets her quill down to properly face Luna. Is it about Anon? Luna shakes her head. Not today. I've actually come to see how you're doing. You were acting a bit down last night. Seems Luna is as perceptive as ever. Not that Blossom is surprised. <sighs> Was lost in thought, princess. It won't affect how well I protect Anon. Luna walks over and takes a seat. I know that. And no need for the formalities, Blossom. It's just us, after all. Blossom drops her airs and relaxes a bit. She even rotates her head some to ease the stiffness in her neck from all the paperwork. Just... seeing everyone there brought up some old memories. Blossom answers. Luna understands what Blossom is speaking of. She was there when her partner became sick, and was there when he passed away. Luna can never forget the cries of her captain, as she clung onto her mates while he lay on his deathbed. It's one of the few things that haunts her to this very day. Not to mention that it was only weeks after when Nightmare Moon took over. It must have been hard on Blossom. How was he? Luna asks, somberly. Blossom lets out a sigh. A bit dirty, but... I cleaned him up and set flowers out. I'm ashamed to admit I haven't visited him in a while. I know I offered it before, but I could cast a cleansing spell to keep things clean. Blossom shakes her head. No, thank you. Going back actually helps a bit. I'll be sure to visit more often. That's good to hear. <laughs> Enough of this sad stuff. How about you? You seem to have a lot on your mind. Luna doesn't wish to press if Blossom wants to change the subject. Well, there's plenty to think about with Anon. Blossom rolls her eyes. Spare me the details. I've got work to do. Come now. Allow a mare to indulge a little, Blossom. I swear, you're like a mare in heat. Luna feels a blush grow on her muzzle. He does make me feel like that. Blossom just shakes her head. Can't you talk to your sister about this stuff? She and Anon are busy at the moment. You're the only pony I've got. Just a few minutes, please. Blossom turns to Luna with an unamused look. <sighs> Fine. Good. So, what do you like about Anon? <sighs> really? I don't like him that way, Luna. That doesn't mean you can't appreciate something about him. Blossom takes a moment to think. Well, I guess I like how straightforward he is. Luna nods. Yes, I do adore that about him. Yet he also knows when to bend the truth for his friends. He is selfless in that regard. So, um... What do you like about him? Mm -hmm. Luna raises a brow at Blossom. Well, I happen to see what I liked last night as we bathed. Luna covers the huge blush on her face as she starts giggling. Blossom can only sit there in awe of what she sees. Never in her life has she seen Luna act like this before. She must really be in love with a guy for her to practically turn into a school filly with a crush. Uh, just thinking about it makes me well right! Few minutes are up! Blossom shouts, with her face now covered in a blush as she gets up from her seat and pushes Luna out. I swear just the thought makes me quiver and anticipate- Blossom slams the door to her office shut. That mare is seriously gonna fall into her heat if she keeps those thoughts up. Still, Blossom can't stop herself from smiling some. A small chuckle leaves her as she walks back over to her desk. It's nice to see her princess look as happy as she is. She deserves it. Twilight and Spike both enter into a non-store. She's surprised to see how many different species of customers he has, each group talking amongst themselves as they enjoy whatever they've purchased. Spike is already walking to the front register, but Twilight peers around the room, checking to see if she recognizes any pony. So far, she doesn't. She steps further into the store and follows Spike. He's looking through the glass display with a large smile. Twilight looks the items over as well. Everything she sees looks familiar, and yet also different. She wonders what could possibly be different about Anand's candy. It's enough to draw a crowd, and is priced affordably too. 
Compared to the shops around Canterlots, this is practically a steal. Welcome. A voice calls out. Twilight looks up from the display and comes face to face with Lyra. However, her gaze is vacant, as if she's staring past Twilight. Twilight can feel her heart start to race. She knew that his friends worked here, so she was prepared for the looks. But this wasn't what she expected. What would you like? Lyra asks in a monotone voice. Can I have the triple chocolate cookie? Spike asks. Lyra doesn't say anything as she brings up his order. She then looks up and makes eye contact with Twilight. That distant look is still there. You? Yeah. There's something wrong here. That much Twilight can sense. She can only speculate it has something to do with Anon. Maybe they had a falling out? Twilight shakes her head. It's none of her business. I'll have the gummy worms. Twilight says, after glancing at one of the more exotic items. Very well. Lyra packs their order and sets it onto the counter. Twilight pays the bits and takes the bag from Lyra. Lyra doesn't even say anything as she walks into the kitchen. Did Lyra seem a bit strange? Spike asks. She's probably tired from all these customers. Twilight lies. Spike nods. There are a lot of creatures here. Uh, so where to now? Twilight looks up to a clock on the wall. She feels the fur on her body stand on end. It's almost time for her to meet with Luna. We should head back to the castle. It's almost time for my training. Oh, fine. As Twilight walks, Spike fishes out his cookie and takes a large bite. His eyes light up as he looks over at Twilight. This is really good! As they walk towards the castle, Twilight decides to pull one of the gummy worms from the bag and pop it into her mouth. Her eyes widen as she experiences something she's never had before. The flavor and texture was so unique and oddly satisfying. Whoa, are they really that good? Spike asks. Twilight looks over at Spike and notices that her vision is a bit blurry. She brings up a hoof to her eyes and feels her fur become damp. Why is she crying? For many reasons. When she ate that candy, it made her realize that she knows nothing about Anon. All those times they talked, nothing of it was about him. She just wanted to know about his people and their technology. Even as she heard the rumors about him in Ponyville, she didn't care. Brushing it off as nothing and continuing her work as usual. Never did she think that he could make something so sweet and delicate. Yet when she tasted that candy, she felt as if she found something. Faint as it may be, she felt some hope return. She looks down at Spike. Who knew Anon made such great things? Yeah, we should stop by more often. I'd like that. With everything Twilight has been feeling, she feels prepared for whatever lies ahead. Celestia and Anon walk down the streets of Canterlot towards a specific pony's home. She looks in the corner of her eye and notices that Anon is still deep in thought. What he asked earlier had also taken a good part of her mind. Anon would really forgive Twilight if she asked him? The notion almost flies in the face of what she knows about him. Not that he's selfish, but that he's rather adamant in what he believes is right and wrong. Though she meant what she said. She would never force him to forgive Twilight if that was his choice. However, her mind does wander to other things. If she were to tell him that she loved him and wanted to be with him, would he agree? The idea doesn't fill Celestia with joy, as she would hope, but instead she worries. Would he say yes? Because he too loves her? Or would he only agree because he believes it would make her happy? As much as she wants to be with him, just like with Twilight, she doesn't want to force him to do something he doesn't believe in. Celestia's heart wins a sum. She never expected this to be easy, but now she will have to consider if Anon's reciprocation is due to mutual love or a sense of loyalty. Perhaps being up front when the time comes would prove fruitful. Celestia shakes her head. There's no reason to bother thinking about that now. There are many things she would like to plan before popping the question to him. But right now, she just wants to ensure that Anon is following what his heart says. So, where are we headed? Anon asks, bringing Celestia from her thoughts. Fancy pants home. 
He will be the coordinator for this year's Wonder Festival. Wonder Festival? Anon asks with a raised brow. Celestia nods. It only happens once every ten years. Ponies and creatures from all around push themselves to the limits in various challenges. Medals are given out, and our judges are none other than the Wonderbolts themselves. Sounds like the Olympics. What's that? A human version. Anon answers, simply enough. Well, you'll have to tell me all about it when we're alone. I guess. So, other than medals, do the contestants get anything else? That's up to the judges. Sometimes contestants are accepted into the Wonderbolts. I've even taken in a few to join the Royal Guard. There are endless possibilities. As for anything official, no, just the medals. That's cool. Celestia finds that they're already at Fancy Pants' home. She walks up to the front door, but before she can even knock, the door opens wide. Good to see you, princess! Fancy Pants says with a smile. Thank you for taking the time to speak with me. It's no trouble at all. He then looks over to see Anon. Oh, man, I see you've brought this young fellow. Uh, what was it again? He rubs his chin in thoughts. Anon, yes, I do remember you. Now I'm positive we've never officially introduced ourselves. Fancy extends his hoof. Fancy Pants the Third. Anon takes his hoof and gives it a shake. Anon, the human. Oh, where are my manners? Fancy moves from the doorway. Please, come in. We have much to discuss about the upcoming event. Celestia looks down at Anon and gives him a smile while gesturing her head for him to step in first. He just shrugs and walks ahead of her. Celestia hopes that this event will be something Anon will enjoy. Twilight is standing before the library. Spike is by her side as she takes one last breath before stepping inside. Waiting for her is Princess Luna. She's using her magic to place large stacks of books onto the table where Twilight studies. She pauses and turns over to Twilight. She looks between her and Spike for a moment before staring directly at Twilight. Take a seat. Luna speaks calmly. Twilight doesn't say anything as she walks over and sits before the table. Luna pulls a book from the stack and places it in front of Twilight. Read. Twilight is a bit confused. Besides her direct nature, she can't sense any hatred coming from Luna. It's as if she's actually here to teach her. Twilight takes the book and opens to the first page. She's surprised to find it's the tale of the two sisters. Confused, she looks up at Luna. Um, what does this have to do with my studies? Luna raises a brow. Isn't it obvious? Twilight shakes her head no. Nightmare Moon was undoubtedly evil. But there was a reason why she did what she did. Figure out why, and perhaps you will enlighten yourself. Understand... Nightmare Moon? Twilight is almost baffled by the suggestion. Is that too difficult to task? Should we start from the basics? Luna floats over a fool's book on feelings. Perhaps this is more your speed. Alright, that hurt. She looks back up to Luna. No, it just... Give me some time. You have until I return to come up with an answer. Luna walks towards the door, but stops as she looks down at Spike. Come with me. Twilight must do this alone. Oh, uh, okay. He follows behind Luna as they both enter into the hall and leave Twilight alone. He continues to follow her as she walks somewhere he isn't familiar with. So where are we going? Luna stops once she's far enough. She looks down at Spike, almost with a pitying look just before she steals herself over. Spike? I have something I need to tell you. Anything, Princess. I think it's time someone told you why Twilight had to leave Ponyville. This is probably not going to end well. Considering there are a lot of sides clashing with each other, this ain't going to be pretty. Anywho, let's get on to our fabulous donators. Top donators are 630, Badass Waffle, Only One Thing, Suru Orion, and Iron Sky. Darkside, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moon, Heart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Stu Hex, Sword Brother, Mordred, Omicron, Lyra, Runeslife, 9852, Will, Chris, Twinkie, Ride, Soul, Shadow Moon, Luigi, 88, Chancer, Cross, Big Smoke, 369, Jesse Smith, Popcat, GGF, and many more amazing people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.